Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. This is John with Tommy's Top Picks here to bring you your weekly market update. Um, not too much craziness going on this week. There's a bit of volatility, of course, but uh, you know we seem to be in a mode of volatility over the past couple of weeks. So nothing, nothing I expected there. There's a couple of good deals and a couple of, uh, I guess, what would be spicy sales. I don't know. Very high uh, increases in price. So let's jump in and go through it. Uh, WTR unlimited boxes have jumped up six and a half percent to forty six a box. Still super super cheap considering it's a box, uh, but it is unlimited. So that is. Is kind of what you get. Um, WTR cases jumped up 10.5%. It would be interesting to see how this chart looks between the two, but um, it's at 239, kind of uh, retracing back to where it's been. If you look at these historic prices, that looks wrong. 195, was it really that low at one point? That's crazy. Um, and uh, so we'll look at what that looks like on the chart, but it does look like it's just bouncing back to where it had uh, had been before, a little bit higher actually. Uh, Arc is down 8.5% to uh, 350, so that's pretty sweet. It was already down last week, coming off of the 400s. Um, so this is an unlimited case of Arcane rising, a, a you know fan favorite and a low uh, quantity because they already said that it was you know out of print and uh, did not have any more coming. So theoretically, we should be running out of this at some point. So 350 seems like a reasonable price. And then we have um, crew honorable mention didn't quite hit the mark, but it dropped to 289. Uh, this is an unlimited case again. Monarch unlimited case down 5% at 193. It seems uh, fairly reasonable for Monarch, which you know everyone knows is printed to the moon. Uh, WTR first edition boxes dropped down to 3,000. I actually saw uh, there was some price. Uh, vol like volatility beneath 3,000. I don't know how many sales were there. I don't have that off the top of my head, but it did seem to drop down a bit. Clearly things are happening on this right now. Crew has jumped up to 450, about 11.1%. Uh, um, that is after a you know declined to 400 from kind of 425. So this is kind of that rubber band effect, pulled too hard, bounced back higher. Just something that happens, nothing surprising there. Uh, Mon dropped down to 85 a box, 21%. This is crazy low deal. This is first edition boxes, $85 a box. That's uh, That makes it sound more like it's a EVR or Tales of Aria sort of box. Um, I know the print runs were high, but I don't think they were that high. I'm pretty sure these two sets uh, were much higher, but then again, their prices are declining too. So let's go ahead and look at those. $73 for Tales of Aria, down 5.5%. Uh, we'll round it. And then uh, Everfist bounced back after a decline to $55. So it's up 15.3% uh, back to where it was beforehand. So nothing too special there, just kind of reversion, revision to the mean, as you see. Uh, the previous set with the big print runs before UPR and out of um, map all tend to have this like volatility range. I remember we had this with Tales of Aria too. It was a period of volatility as it tried to sort itself out post map um, and then it settles and then it either ticks up, ticks down, depending on you know where the market is and what the market is feeling. Uh, nothing else, nothing interesting in first edition cases. Everything's actually dead center, same where it was. Nothing really changed. A couple bucks here and there, but um, really nothing to report there. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into best selling. Oops, I have it too far up. All right, so this is best selling stuff. Oh, they changed their UI. Interesting. I just noticed that banners added, but the best selling filter is floating. Um, I don't think that was like that before. Anyways, uh, a lot of familiar faces here. We're seeing the Skullbone cross wrap, Storm Striders as usual. E Strike is down to $17.99. That's really low. Uh, I would recommend checking out Staxwell. He has a, um, a card market update where he checks out, you know, kind of hot buys, hot sells, things like that. Uh, every week uh, he just started. I find it to be very informative. I've actually bought some stuff off of uh, what he has seen um, in the marketplace. I think he's got some pretty, pretty good advice and well, it's not financial advice, but pretty good uh, recommendations or thoughts on the market as a whole. So check him out. Uh, as you know, I just do a summary of best selling stuff. Uh, Crown of Providence is, uh, you know, kind of starting to tick up on these coal foils, which is uh, a little upsetting for me. I imagine that's because of the Emperor and uh, that sort of thing, because he will probably, he is royal without needing the royal helm, so he'll probably end up using that, because it is a good one. Uh, Toma Findel has dropped really low uh, and is such a critical piece to so many decks, so I think that's just moving a lot of them. Um, 
Drakai. Let's see where the coal foil is. Still flat. Oh, it dropped under 300. This is the first time I think we've seen it there. So that's good on the coal foil. Well, good if you want to buy. Uh, like I said, I'm probably going to hold off on that until later. People are saying this is going to be critical for Emperor. Um, not so sure about that. And then, of course, your favorite stuff with the uh, Flame Scale Furnace and the Command and Conquer. I imagine this gets a reprint, so this price is probably too high, uh, but we'll see. Uh, even things that have gotten reprints have held up pretty heavily uh, over time, uh, including things like Art of War. It's 45, even though it had a reprint. And uh, there's a couple, I think it was some of the... Um, uh, mechanologist stuff I was looking at that has the the white border reprints and they're still like pretty pretty pricey so anyways uh, that's that for the market overview nothing too interesting to share there let's go ahead and jump back uh, to the charts and see what we got here uh, yeah WTR just looks like it's on the uprise it's really nothing special though because we're talking a couple bucks here and there uh, between cases and boxes still got the premium as you can see down there nothing special and this is all unlimited arc dropping off a cliff and settling below okay so we talked about this before how it might pop off the top of the history historic uh top right would be a thing it dropped way below it so at this point we cannot say that it's held resistance it will not hold resistance it did not hold resistance uh let's see where it lands next week i imagine we will get some sort of revision you know kind of the rubber band effect that we talk about um but it, it because it broke that resistance point it's harder to trust that it will maintain this step up so this could just be a, kind of a fake out situation prices get declined uh may settle back into this kind of long-term average so let's see how that goes uh it looks like there is a bit of an arbitrage opportunity uh what is that five six seven eight bucks you know give or take per box there nothing too special usually doesn't work uh as far as it for shipping and all the rest um, but that does seem to be as big of an ARB opportunity as we've seen. I think the highest we've ever seen was like 10 or $12. Um, so they do not happen very often. They do not stay for very long. Uh, so if you are watching this stuff on your own, do your own math on a day-to-day -day basis, you might be able to catch a better opportunity uh, on the weekly. We have not. Crew uh, still in this jagged downtrend sort of thing, kind of heading down, but we're not sure where it lands. Uh, again, this is unlimited, so not too surprising. Uh, compared to EVR, it's just not as powerful of cards. There's some good stuff in there, but just not as powerful. And then our premium is still intact for the cases. Monarch. Monarch has fallen off the edge. Uh, it's below zero. No, that's not zero, but it is below its historic long-term trend. Uh, and floor that was settled here. So now we're kind of in unknown zone. Interesting to see where this lands. Uh, the premium is really bad, $10. So right now you have a pretty nice arbitrage opportunity. If you buy a case, $48.25 a box, and uh, you can sell for $58 if you get uh, some sort of discount of shipping, if you have a low tax uh, state when you buy, things like that may make this worth it. Um, it is not worth it where we live, that's for sure. Uh, our taxes are high on in, on uh, purchases. Uh, this is flat. Tales of Aria, just kind of hanging around. Nothing special here, uh, which is kind of funny because we had some volatility. I guess that was first edition, though, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Tales of Aria, <laughs> online. <laughs> it's like the most boring product. No one wants it. Uh, yeah, this doesn't do anything. Actually, most of this stuff is not that interesting. We didn't have much change at all in first edition stuff. <clears throat> let's look at crew all right so here's the j curve that we talk about all the time this would be about the time i'd buy it i have plenty of this so i don't really want it um but on the case 1800 that's a good price and we're on an uptick with these depressed markets and some of the financial uh news i'll cover at the end here i don't know that i would jump on any of this um it's just not a good enough deal right now for me uh and this is uh losing its premium for the boxes versus cases uh so nothing special there i think this will settle out eventually but we're still in a, a price discovery mode for first edition crew monarch uh has found a bit of a footing here we'll see if it maintains it, it may because this is pretty low for a first edition product i mean there are still good coal foils in there right um part of this uh may be because of um prism you know living legend so now you got two out and that just makes it harder to sell these boxes right so they're still on the market even though their cards aren't that useful obviously that'll change if we get another light illusionist or light anything probably um or illusionist anything probably um although i don't know if anything in mon is really used in dromai 
Uh, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I don't think they are. I think it's only the Lucian's cards in Everfest that are used by um, by Drum. I don't think anything in Mon is. So, uh, so again, Illusion is not drawing the Mon um, purchases, and same with uh, Rune Blade. There's definitely cards that are used. Um, I'm not sure how many of them, but there are definitely some. So yeah, you got you got some stuff in mind that's still valuable. Premium still intact, nothing surprising there. What is surprising though is this box, eighty-five dollars a box is really cheap for a first edition product. So buying it um, by the box is like, uh, I'm sorry, by the box is definitely an interesting take at this point. I'm I am pretty shocked that, that went that low. Um, we'll probably see a revision to the mean, but it doesn't mean we don't stick on this downtrend here like it may it may revise up but like here you know not all the way back up so we may get a continual downtrend on mon i guess people really really hate it um tales of aria i know it has a lot of bad history tales of aria uh dropping off still nothing surprising here this may still be second map i can't remember if tales of aria is still in its 35 percent map um i've never gone and looked at the exact policy and how long that lasts but um, I'm guessing it's not just because the volatility downward, but either way, we're just seeing a straight downward trend over time. Yes, there's volatility. Yes, there's high points uh, and low points, but uh, overall, just a downward trend. Nothing special on the box and case comparison. And then, oops, I passed over Everfest. Uh, this is good. This one's definitely still in some level of map, probably the first one. It looks like we're on this uptrend. This would almost be a J curve without the volatility. Uh, but again, this is map supported, so I don't know that I trust any of it. Um, and then we do get a bit of a premium of $5. Probably not worth it for anyone to do anything. I mean, sorry, an arbitrage opportunity for $5. So probably not worth doing anything with that. Um, this is just map curve and map, you know, breaking map coming back. So nothing, nothing too crazy on the last few. I uh, just wanted to talk about a couple of things with the uh, economics and global situation. Uh, we're looking at, well, okay, so the Fed chairman at one of the keynote kind of speaking engagements for the year said he's looking for some growth recession. I don't know if he used that term exactly, but he described it. Uh, it's kind of a painful thing. Um, it's trying to soft landing it in a way that keeps growth happening, which tends to distort the market and looks kind of painful for a lot of different asset classes, a lot of different um, things that people are used to relying on. So what that means, we'll see. Um, and obviously, just because they're looking to do it doesn't mean they succeed at it. There's a particularly difficult um, history with the Fed and their ability to time interest rate uh, policy changes and pivots. They don't tend to do it very well. It tends to go too far or not far enough. If it's not far enough, then we can see 10 years of inflation historically that has happened, um, which would be uh, horrendous for our economy as a whole, I would think. Um, but if they overdo it, then we see a recession, a crash. Um, so this growth recession is trying to, to balance the two, maintain some growth while a recession is allowed to hit, which will hurt you know individuals typically, um, hopefully for only a short period of time, considering how shallow the current downturn is. I still don't think it's a recession. I know people say it's two quarters, blah, blah, blah. But if you actually look it up, it is not in the U.S. It has never been in the U.S. Just that. That's just a rule of thumb that they teach in early econ and, you know, financial firms and stuff. It's fine. It's a, it's a very reasonable rule of thumb. Um, but until we actually do a full examination of the data, we're not going to know for sure. And it takes months to do that. So we'll get, we'll get an official ruling from the was it NBER, uh, Economic Research Bureau? Uh, they basically will tell us one way or the other. It is a bit political. It is a bit subjective just because economics is not a hard science. Surprise, surprise. Um, so we'll see how that all plays out. Whether it's a recession or not doesn't matter because it's a super shallow recession if it is. So it's essentially the same as not being a recession, but just being a slow, uh, you know, slow time. It's it makes no difference. The label just is now political, so it's kind of stupid whether it's a recession or not. It doesn't matter. Point is, we're at a very slow growth period. Whether it's 
technically a recession or not. And uh, we're seeing very unusual market conditions, a very uh, slow growth. So recession or not, doesn't matter. But we're also seeing inflation, which just ticked up the other day, 8.3%. Um, this is uh, year over year for this month, or last month rather. Um, and that is a tick up, minor tick up from last year. Uh, I think it was 8.1 or, or 8.1 or 8.2 last year at this time. So still significant, still concerning um, that the inflation is holding so strongly, even with all these rate hikes. It means the Fed is way behind on the ability to get this under control. And that is, you know, the economy is like a moving train. Once it's going, it's very hard to stop. Uh, they're trying to pull the brakes, but they're not hitting aggressive enough. And that resulted in a market, um, I guess, consensus or partial consensus that there's about a 40 percent chance that they raise it by one point in this coming session, which I believe is either this week or next week. Um, if they do that, that will shock markets. That is partially why you're seeing equities uh, go a little wild um, yesterday, today, etc. It's because this expectation and concern that there'll be a one point hike, that's pretty significant. They don't do that too often. It does indicate a fear that the economy is a little bit out of hand um, and it needs to be cooled off aggressively and quickly. I'll be honest, um, typical economic you know, mindset is slam the brakes. Like, yes, it's gonna hurt, but if you hit it hard enough, we'll drop into a recession, it will suck. People will lose their jobs. Things will be negative for a lot of individuals, um, but it typically happens if you slam the brakes, it's typically a V-shaped bottom. So you do get that, but then within, call it six months, eight months, you know, a year on the faster ones, um, it comes back, those jobs are back, you know, people's hurt is limited in time. Um, financially, it can be very devastating and is definitely a problem. You can throw some support programs in there. Obviously, uh, this administration is willing to do things like that if we did hit a hard recession. Um, so there might be ways to work around that to help um, those that are hurt the most. But the reality is if this um, economy doesn't cool off, then uh, we are, we're in for some very long-term pain that gets very hard to deal with the longer this goes. Um, I honestly think they're they're likely to do it, but uh, this Fed has proven to be a little slow to act. They probably should have been doing rate hikes a little bit earlier. They were instead saying it was transitory. Um, honestly, I you know I believe that it was transitory too, uh, based on some economics we talked about with the microchip basis and all that stuff. It seems that microchips are now producible. Although I did hear China looks like they're going to have another lockdown, which will again mess up uh, the microchip production and then even more scary we are facing a railway strike uh in the coming weeks months we're not sure and a railway strike in the u.s would uh cause massive issues to our economy probably spiking inflation further because cost of freight would go up and everything uses freight pretty much um and so everything from your your candy bars to your you know, car tires to whatever uh, that gets transported by freight would uh, have to pay a premium to be moved across this large country. And if that happens, um, and it and it lasts, because if it's fast, if it happens and they you know agree to give them raises or whatever, and they get back to work immediately, it doesn't have a big impact. But if it does uh, last for a while and there is a standoff, um, then we end up in serious trouble on the inflation front, which is why I'm kind of hoping and hedging that the Fed will raise it one point because it will help um, reduce the impact of this potential railway strike. Honestly, I think they should just raise the pay of the freaking railway workers and, you know, move along. The whole economy has shifted upwards. If you're not paying people more, um, you're kind of falling, they're falling behind. And uh, we've been in this labor falls behind mindset for 40 some odd years, like a whole generation. Um, and so I think we're at the edge of it. I don't think you can go much further on this. So people need to kind of wake up on both sides. And you guys know I'm a, a capitalist. I do investments for a living. And the reality is there's good times uh, to cut costs and try to be as stringent as possible. And there's bad times to do that where it hurts the most, such as European austerity. Um, it doesn't work in some cases. In fact, has massive ripple effects and implications that just cause a lot of harm. Um, 
So I fully support giving the union workers what they want. Give them their pay raise. They deserve it. They're keeping our country running. And if you don't, the implications are massive and uh, painful for everyone in the economy. So nothing like runaway inflation during a recession. That's something that happens. Um, And uh, that is what would happen. So uh, again, all of this is speculative and none of it is financial advice, but that is where things are today. So hopefully we end up with some good news. Uh, Railway strike doesn't happen. We do get a one point increase, although that would hurt in the short term. It might cause us to cool off enough that we can get back to a more regular life, uh, uh, economic life, you know, things back to normal for everyone. And, uh, you know, hopefully this, this softer landing works out, but, um, I'm not, I'm not going to bet the farm on that one. That's for sure. So if you enjoyed this content, uh, sorry, it's so, uh, I don't know, bad newsy, but that's just the nature of economics right now. Uh, but if you enjoyed the content or find the information informative, go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know if I got something wrong, you know, screwed something up economically, uh, maybe even box prices or something, something's happening and I missed that's causing some of this. Happy to hear it. Happy to interact. Um, and check out that guy Staxwell. Like I said, he does a singles thing every week. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I subscribed. Um, so maybe we can, we can do some collaboration. I, I chatted with him a little bit, so, uh, we're going to try to get that done. I just need to make time in my schedule to actually do a coordinated thing. <laughs> so fortunately I'm very busy. Uh, all right. So I hope you guys enjoyed the content. If you did, you know, do all those things. And in the meantime, uh, get out there, crack some packs, play some games. I got to play some Genesis last night. That was fun. Got to play some other games, vampire. There's a vampire card game. That's a lot of fun. Uh, so really enjoying that, uh, exploring some other games, uh, love flesh and blood. Obviously I still play and, uh, yeah, hope you're out there having fun, cracking packs and playing games until next time. Have a good one.